Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 6, The False Prophet. We are finally nearing the end of our quest. In our previous episode, we discovered the mysterious Vortex Cube. We crafted the Human Lens. We freed two more of the Shrines of Virtue, and in doing so recovered the 6th and 7th Moonstone of the 8 that we have to get. And that's the last thing we need to do discover the eighth moonstone atop the Shrine of Spirituality. If we look at the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom, it explains that to us. We need a convex lens, a concave lens, which we have both of those, the eight moonstones, we have seven of those, and the vortex cube. Those are the items required to return the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom to the void. So our next step is to find the final moonstone, and to do, that, to do that, we must find the Shrine of Spirituality. Before we begin looking for the Shrine of Spirituality, I have one last thing we must do, because I made a mistake at the end of our last episode. I'm going to use our Orb of the Moons, place it one step to the north and two to the west, to return us to the Shrine of Humility. As you may remember, the Shrine of Humility was freed at the very end of our last episode, and when I freed the Shrine... I used the Rune of Humility. I spoke the Mantra of Humility, Lum. The Shrine was freed. Shamino stepped up to the Shrine and went to go ahead and get the Moonstone. But instead of typing G for get, I typed U for use. And well, there's the Moonstone on the ground. I accidentally buried it instead of picking it up. Now that's actually not too big of a deal right now. The um, Moons are not out, so... If the moons were out, if they had risen above the horizon, there'd be a moon gate here now. We would not be able to pick up this moonstone until the moons had once again set. Let's go ahead and grab that moonstone while we can, before the moons come up, get it into our inventory. And we'll move that into our moonstone bag. That was a pretty close one. Alright, now we have the seven moonstones that are required. So we need to get that last moonstone. We have to find the Shrine of Spirituality. Well, as you may know, each shrine is associated with a town, so let's go to the Town of Spirituality, ask around, and see if we can find that shrine. Let's use the Moonstone, two spaces to the west and two to the south, to take us to the Town of Scarabray. Okay, we're back in Scarabray, where we were once before. Let's look around and see if we can talk to the townspeople. Maybe one of them knows where this uh, shrine is. Let's go looking for the mayor. The mayors usually know a lot about the shrines, the mantras, and the runes and such. That's the innkeeper, Gideon. Oh, who's that over there I just saw? There he is. There's the mayor. Let's speak with Trenton. You have come back. Well... Do you know where the shrine is, Trenton? Speak to Horns of that. He may be mad, but he is still quick and astute in the ways of magic. Ah, Horns, the wizard, the mage, the one who lives on that island to the north of town. Okay, let's go talk to him. Goodbye. All right, let's head north then, and we'll go look for Horns. Maybe he can help us uh, find where the shrine is. Here's that dock. There's Yorl. Uh, Santre is holding our skiff, so go ahead and drop that in the water, and everybody get aboard. Oops. And there is the island that Horns lives on, not too far to the north. And Santre, go ahead and, uh, hang on, let's get the whole party out of the boat, and Santre can go pick it up. There we are. All right, and there's Horns. Let's speak with him. Once they come for wanting, twice they came to see, if I am relenting in my mystery. <sighs> okay, Horns, uh, where's the Shrine of Spirituality? Through a glowing door, by the full moon's light. For me to tell you more would take us half the night. Through a glowing door? Well, the only glowing door I know of is a, a moon gate. The moon gates that are generated by the moonstones we've been collecting all this time. 
the way that works is, as I've already explained, once a moonstone is placed in the ground, when the moons rise above the horizon, a shimmering blue gate appears above them. And depending on which moon phase is on the moonstone tells you where you're going to go. So if it's a half moon, as I can see rising above the horizon right now, with the uh, light on the left side of the moon and shadow to the right, well, stepping into any moon gate would take us to that, that moonstone that is that matches that. It would take you to the matching moonstone. So normally those moonstones are scattered all across Britannia by each of the towns. In this game, they were actually atop each of the shrines. Um, we're actually holding all of them right now, so we wouldn't really go anywhere. Now, to get to the Shrine of Spirituality, though, it says that he wants us to go by the full moon's light. That must mean that when both moons are full, we can get to the Shrine of Spirituality. Hmm. Let's go ahead and uh, look outside real quickly here. The moons are rising, but they haven't risen fully yet. I can tell you right now, though, we don't have full moons. One, it looks like we have a half moon there. So in order for us to get to a full moon, we might have to wait some time. Well, fortunately, there's an inn here. Let's let's go ahead and use this skiff. No, not get it. Use it. I keep running into problems where I seem to be confusing the G and the U keys. All right. Let's step into town. We can use the inn to let time pass more quickly. Let's wait another hour or so for the for that other moon to rise above the horizon to see what we're looking at. It looks like they're both half moons. Well, that's not going to do us any good. In fact, it's going to take us quite a while for those moons to get to full. Let's see if those moons are waxing or waning. Let's rest for one night and see what happens. Let's ask for a room. 32 gold. Oh, and we need to have money to do that. Does Dupre have money? Yes, let's go ahead and hand that money to the Avatar. Let's try that again. You sleep in a comfortable bed. And wake re you wake rested and eat a large breakfast. Good morning, my friends. Come back, dear souls. Okay, the sun is rising. Ne neither of the moons is up yet, so we're going to have to wait for that. If we rest in the inn again, that's going to take us to the next sunrise, so let's go ahead and get out of town and rest for only a few hours. Let's try resting for five hours or so. The Avatar will guard, and we'll see what happens. There we go. Ah, okay, so. Last night, the moons were at half. Now they're waning towards, towards a new moon. Hmm. Well, what Horace told us was that we have to wait for full moons. And that's going to take a while. That's going to take half a month. And that, the longer we wait, the longer we wait for this war to go on, the more people are dying. That, that, that's just not acceptable. Maybe there's another way to find the Shrine of Spirituality. Now, I remember what, each of the shrines had a moonstone on top of them. The gargoyles had placed them there in order to erect a force field. And of course, each of those moonstones was the moonstone for the accompanying town, for that accompanying shrine. We're carrying seven of them. That eighth moonstone should still be atop that altar. If we were to step into a moon gate at that moonstone's moon phase, it should take us there. And if we look at all the moonstones we've gathered, the only one that we're missing is the half moon opposite this one, the half moon where the light is on the right side and the shadows on the left. Well, since the moon is currently going towards new, and then after that, the next moon phase should be this one, the crescent on the right, and then after that will be the half moon on the right. So we just need to stay, wait through three more moon phases. And that'll be a lot quicker than waiting for the moon to be all the way full. 
Plus, we have no guarantee that by that time both moons will be full at the same time. The moons don't exactly go at the exact... because the moons move independent of each other. Well, there's no guarantee that they're go both going to be full at the same time. Let's try resting for a few more days and see if we can wait until the moon... At least one of the moons is in that uh, half-moon phase that we're looking for. Let's get another room. Let's wait one more night. And we'll see what happens. These moons are waning towards uh, the new moon. Alright, let's wait another few hours and we'll see where the moons are now. There we go. One of the new, one of the moons is new, and the other one is still a crescent. As I said, there no, there's no guarantee they're going to be the same phase anymore. Okay, let's rest another night. That moon, that moon there on the left is going to turn into a uh, crescent moon soon on the other side, and then it'll be a half moon, and maybe then we should be able to get to the shrine. Okay. Oh my, look what's happening. If I wait another hour, you should be able to see this pretty well. That moon is passing in front of the sun. It looks like we have a solar eclipse going on. Yes, the moon is directly in front of the sun. So even though it's daytime, it's dark out. It's a very exciting and interesting phenomenon. Well, we don't need to rest anymore. We just need to get through this day. Let's go ahead back into the inn one, once more. Ah, and now we don't have enough, enough money. Let's quickly talk to YOLO. None of us are carrying any gold. We need to get some more gold. <laughs> All right. We just don't have enough for, a, for rooms anymore. Let's go ahead and use that Orb of the Moons to head back to the castle in Britain, in Lord British's castle, so we can get some of our gold that we stored there. I'm sure while this is going on, both uh, Nystal and Lord British are excited looking at the uh, eclipse. After all, Lord British actually has a, uh, has a telescope. Let's, let's use the telescope. Unfortunately, it doesn't let us look upwards and get a good view of the eclipse, but I'm sure all of the astronomers in uh, Britannia are quite excited about this turn of events. So let's go ahead and get all the gold out. There's quite a bunch of it left. Let's take as much as we can. After all, as we come towards the end of our quest, there we go. Now we have all the gold. Alright. And while we're here in Britain, uh, there is an inn here as well, so let's just go to the inn here in Britain. Let's ignore Finn once again, and we'll pass through the uh, Britannian Mint, which should be right over here, yep. And I believe the inn is right over here. You might have passed it. It's hard to see when it's uh, dark out like this. There it is. There we go. That'll get us through the night. 
And as you can see, that first moon is now at a waxing, core, uh, waxing crescent. We just have to wait through one more moon phase. So let's go ahead and rest one more night. And that should get us where we need to be. We're almost there. Let's rest one more night again. There we go. Those moons are now at half moons. Let's quickly use one of our moonstones. Let's go ahead and walk over here really quickly. And we'll do this right by the castle. That's a good central location where, we'll, where we can always return to very easily with our Orb of the Moons. Oops, I went a little too far here. Okay, here's a good spot where we can bury a Moonstone. It really shouldn't matter which Moonstone we bury, because any Moonstone we bury is going to take us to the Moonstone matching this phase, which should be the Moonstone on the Shrine of Spirituality. Let's just use the first one here. Moonstone buried, let's step away, and there's a moon gate. I hope this works, let's see what happens. We made it! We're here at a shrine! Let's very quickly step out of the way here. Oh my. Leona, why don't you go ahead and uh, light a torch? so we can see what's going on. Wow, we are at a shrine that's in the middle of the ethereal void. This is the elusive shrine of spirituality. Well, we know what to do as usual. Let's go ahead and use that rune of spirituality, which is right here. And we already learned that the mantra of spirituality is Om. Done. The shrine has been freed. Shamino, grab that moonstone. We now have all eight moonstones. We have both lenses, and we have the Vortex Cube. These are all of the items required to send the Codex back into the Void. We just need to go ahead and get our uh, missing Moonstone, the one that we used to get here. We need to go ahead and recover that, which we left back at the castle. Now, the moons are still out, so we're going to have to wait a few hours for that moon gate to disappear. Once we step over the drawbridge, it should be, there it is, waiting for us. Let's just pass time here until those moons set. I can imagine the Avatar sitting impatiently, knowing that the quest is so close to completion, at least hopefully, if, if the Codex is right, if his hopes are right, this could be the thing that finally brings peace. And all it requires is one moon to slip below the horizon as they sit and while away the hours, growing more and more impatient. Knowing that their quest is so close to completion. And there we are, the moon's about to set. Just another hour or two. There we go, and then final moon gate closes. Shamino grabs the moonstone, and now we have all eight. Okay. Well, the time has come. As strange as the instructions are, as... Let's get away from Finn. A a as hard as it's going to be to give up the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom, we need to return to the Void. There's nothing to do but just to do it. We're 
going to use that Orb of the Moons and place it one step to the south and one to the east to head back to the Isle of the Avatar. And reverently, we approach the shrine. Okay, the Avatar has in his inventory two lenses. Let's go ahead and put one lens. Let's have everybody wait over here so they're not in the way. And look, the light is converging over the codex. And here the light will disperse over the codex. Shamino, may I have the moonstones, please? Okay. It's said to put them into the vortex cube. And the last one. All right, let's put the Vortex Cube in front of the book. And they said that all was required was to use the Vortex Cube. Well, here goes nothing. The Codex has vanished! A glowing portal springs from the floor. From its crimson depths, Lord British emerges, trailed by the mage Nestal. Anguish and disbelief prevail upon the royal seer's face, but Lord British directs his stony gaze at you and speaks as if to a wayward child. Thou didst have a just cause to burgle our codex, I trust, his majesty says, but for virtue's sake, what hast thou done with it? You pick up the concave lens and pass it to the king. Was the book ever truly ours, your majesty? Was it written for Britannia alone? Thou dost no longer hold the codex, but is its wisdom indeed lost? Look into the vortex and let the codex answer for itself. As Lord British holds the glass before the wall, the codex of ultimate wisdom wavers into view against a myriad of swimming stars. Yet the book remains closed. And waves of heat shimmer in the air, heralding the birth of another red gate. King Draxinusum of the Gargoyles strides forward, flanked by a small army of wingless attendants. Like Lord British, he seems to suppress his rage only through a heroic effort of will. His scaly hand grasps your shoulder, and your amulet of submission grows very warm. Thy time hath come, thief! he says. Quickly you reach down to seize the concave lens, and you press it into the hand of the towering gargoyle king, meeting his sunken eyes. Join my lord in his search for peace, I beg thee. At your urging, King Droxinusum reluctantly raises his lens to catch the light. As Lord British holds up his own lens, every eye in the room, human and gargoyle alike, fixes upon the image of the codex which shines upon the wall. The ancient book opens, both kings gaze upon its pages in spellbound silence, as the eloquence of ultimate wisdom is revealed in the tongues of each lord's domain. You too can read the answers the Codex gives. And when its wisdom is gleaned, when, each, when Lord British and King Draxinusum turn to each other as friends, hating no longer, fearing no more, you know that your mission to Britannia has ended at last.
Congratulations! Thou hast completed Ultima VI, the False Prophet, in two months. Report thy feat unto Lord British at Origin Systems. Well, that's the game, everybody. That's Ultima VI, the False Prophet. I want to thank everybody for watching and for supporting me during this, my very first ever Let's Play series. And now it's come to an end. But this isn't the end of the videos. I still have one or two more videos to show you. Some videos where we might go over some Easter eggs, some tricks, and some secrets that we didn't get to explore in the course of the Let's Play videos. And I'll put those out soon. But in the meantime, I want to thank everybody for watching, and I'll see you in our next videos. Bye, everybody.